This is Augusto Zimmerman, Director of Postgraduate Studies at the School of Law at Murdoch University. He's also thrown his hat in the ring for the soon-to-be-vacated position of President of the Australian Human Rights Commission. Now, I had the pleasure of meeting Augusto at the recent ICMI conference last weekend after he gave a disturbing speech about the state of the family court system in Australia, and particularly in his home state of Western Australia. He's written numerous articles on the pernicious use of AVOs and restraining orders to evict fathers from their homes and deny them contact with their children. Such orders are usually granted without any evidence to support claims of violence. Last year, Professor Zimmerman wrote an article on new laws regarding domestic violence being introduced in the West Australian Parliament that go one step further. A woman will now be able to have a restraining order issued if she fears that violence may occur. But back to his bid to be the next president of the Human Rights Commission, Zimmerman would be a refreshing change. He actually believes in fundamental human rights for all, as opposed to current President Gillian Triggs, who believes in using the power of her commission to abuse basic human rights, such as the freedom of speech. But let's hear Zimmerman put forth his own case, as he did on the Bolt Report on Wednesday night. Well, Gillian Triggs is now leaving the Human Rights Commission. So who is going to replace her? In truth, no one should. Scrap the joint. It's just a soapbox for the left. But, of course, this Turnbull government doesn't have the courage to do that kind of thing and will appoint someone, and on past form, probably someone of the left. I'd like to hope it's, in fact, someone who actually does respect free speech. Someone like one man who has applied for Triggs's job is Dr Augusto Zimmerman, Law Reform Commissioner in Western Australia and Adjunct Professor of Law at the Notre Dame University and co-author of a book, No Offence Intended, Why 18C is Wrong, which argues that the law must be changed to allow more free speech. Augusto Zimmerman, thanks for your time. Why did you apply to take over from Gillian Triggs? Well, I, um, I, like yourself... Very concerned about the erosion of fundamental rights in, in Australia. And I was persuaded by some of my friends to apply for the position because I believe to have a track record that proved my commitment to the protection of fundamental rights and not rights that are re- actually privileges of certain c- categories of people. What I want is to be an advocate for human rights for all. And I think one of the most basic rights of the individual is undoubtedly the right to free speech. So why would you do a better job defending that than Gillian Triggs has, do you think? Well, I, look, I don't think it would be very hard to do a better job than her. Uh, absolutely, I can do a much better job than her. First of all, I believe in freedom of speech, and I believe that you have the right to engage in a conversation even in your kitchen. Uh, it's not going to be uh, an offensive thing to have a, a robust discussion, no matter, no matter where, where you are. And certainly what you need to do is to consider the fact that free speech is a basic, basic element of any democratic society. We really need to have more speech rather than less speech. And certainly, like, bad ideas are not defeated by the courts or by, you know, persecuting people, but by being engaged in a robust, civilised debate. But what's, ha- what's gone so wrong with the Human Rights Commission under Gillian Triggs? It's not just the, the questions of bias, of course, the fact that, you know, that it uh, refused to hold an inquiry into children in detention when Labor was in power and the camps were full, but did it when Tony Abbott won and the camps were emptying. Uh, nor is it just about the fact that she gave misleading information again and again to the Senate about certain things and had to correct the record. Um, But it is this element, particularly of free speech, that has gone for protection of minority groups, certain minority groups, and stifled the speech of others. What has happened that's actually poisoned the reputation of the Human Rights Commission? Well, that is a major problem, I must say. Uh, think about the fact that um, these kind of laws can be easily hijacked 
by people who are actually quite intolerant to other people's opinions. And what I have tried to explain in my articles is that if I were a person who is not a tolerant one, I would be taking delight in this kind of laws. I mean, and you actually have some politicians now that, that are basically daring to expand the reach of 18C to other grounds apart from race. For instance, like there is an attempt uh, in now, to, in pre present time, of uh, extending say, a, Section 18C to religious grounds, and therefore an attempt to introduce what I have uh, called a form of blasphemy or Sharia law by stealth. And that's a very dangerous development, especially now in a time of terrorist attacks and, and the threat of terrorism that we are being silenced to discuss on such an important idea or concept. Now, as I understand it, this appointment is made by uh, Attorney General George Brandis. Has he shown any interest yet in appointing you? Well, look, I, I'm not able to answer this question because I think that it would not be very appropriate of me to uh, approach him. I'm pretty sure that I have many people who support my work, who has a regard for my concern for rights and freedoms in this country, and they are free to contact him, as anybody else is, but I don't think it's appropriate for either myself or anyone who is contemplating this position to actually approach the Attorney General, so I haven't done so for these reasons. Okay, now there's three people uh, mentioned in the running. One is you, the other one is Sevaldovsky. Uh, who's done a great job in the human rights area too. Mm -hmm. And the third is Ed Santow. Now, he's already one of the human rights commissioners in charge mm -hmm. of defending freedom. That's his particular brief, particularly freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. Now, here's a strange thing for me, uh, Augusto. Why is Ed Santow a candidate to lead the Human Rights Commission when he has said absolutely nothing that I can find to defend free speech when it's been under such attack. He has made zero impact on the public debate, gone missing, and yet here he is being called a front-runner to replace Gillian Triggs. Can you explain that to me, please? Well, I, uh, look, in many ways, I think the government likes to, you know, make decisions that are quite comfortable. Uh, but uh, in this case, we are facing a major threat in this country. Uh, the threat of uh, or attacks on freedom of speech. So I think what Ed, uh, Mr. Santo does is um, we need to respect. I think he has written articles that are of a very good quality. But he's a, a person who writes on specific issues, not really uh, necessarily directly related to free speech, uh, matters of free speech. What I have done in, throughout my career is to protect and fight for fundamental rights. And I think uh, we have to start with freedom of speech. I have uh, written many books and articles. I have a track record of protecting real human rights. That's, uh, these are the rights of all, everyone, regardless of color, regardless of religion, regardless of gender identity. What you need to do is to reestablish the, perhaps the old-fashioned concept that the human rights should be deserving, everybody should be deserving the, the protection of the law and receive human rights. So I am going to be making it very clear that if I were appointed the position, everybody in this country would receive protection by law and be endowed with their rights because that's what they deserve. Dr. Augusto Zimmerman, thank you so much for your time and good luck to you. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Now, like Andrew Bolt, I think the Human Rights Commission should be scrapped. But in the absence of that unlikely outcome, wouldn't it be preferable to have a president of the Human Rights Commission that believes in more speech, not less, and that believes that 18C is wrong and needs to go. Now, Bolt mentioned three frontrunners for the position, including Professor Zimmerman, but Fairfax has other ideas. They believe Rosalind Croucher, head of the Australian Law Reform Commission, is the frontrunner. Fairfax characterises Croucher's politics as moderate or unknown, but that her support for free speech is seen as more strident than Triggs. Well, that wouldn't be difficult. Under her watch, the Australian Law Reform Commission identified Section 18C of the Racial Discrimination Act as a target for reform, arguing it may be too broad and that declaring offence on the basis of race unlawful was too low a threshold. Well, 
may be too broad and too low a threshold is an understatement and hardly qualifies as strident. The Australian quoted Simon Brenny of the Institute of Public Affairs that the IPA is critical of Professor Croucher for not suggesting the words offend and insult be removed from the law entirely and added, Rosalind Croucher would be a Triggs light appointment. Appointing a person with no apparent commitment to freedom of speech would undo the government's good work in attempting to expand our liberal democratic rights by reforming Section 18C. So I think it would be safe to say that Augusto Zimmerman will be more forthright in leading the charge to reform Section 18C of the Racial Discrimination Act. Now, I have no idea if this is all theatre, if the job has already been decided, but what we do know is that Senator and Attorney General George Brandis will be the one to make the appointment. So I would encourage you to send an email to Senator Brandis and advocate on behalf of Augusto Zimmerman for head of the Human Rights Commission and start to restore some sanity to Australian institutions. And don't forget to check the description box below for a link to George Brandis' email and I'll pin a sample email you can use to the top of the comments section. I'll see you next time.